Hi everyone, Simona here from Vector Twist, and welcome to the first of a three-part series on making isometric rocks, stones and boulders using Adobe Illustrator. These are great to use in your 3D scenes to create things like castles, islands, game assets or even concept art. In this tutorial, I'm not going to use an isometric grid. I'll be working with the 3D tools that Illustrator has, so it will be really lots of fun. Before we get started, take a moment to hit the subscribe button and the bell to get updates on the release of new Vector Twist tutorials. So the first rock that we're going to create, or stone, is this one here. I'm going to show you how to create the base shape and then morph it into that particular stone so you can build up, for example, an isometric wall and have several of them stacked on top of each other. So let's get started. First, we're going to pick our colors. Whatever color you want for your rock or your stone, make sure you have three colors. You need a light, you need a medium, and you need a dark. Because we're going to work with the isometric view, and depending where the light source comes from, you will have a highlight color, you'll have a medium shaded color, and then you will have a dark color. This really helps. So set up your colors beforehand, then you don't have to change anything afterwards. So first I'm just going to choose a light gray. And then we're going to use the rectangle tool. Press and hold the shift key and then simply create a square on the screen. Keep it selected and then we're going to add the isometric 3D effect. So we're going up to effect, 3D, and we're going to choose extrude and bevel. Now from the position, from the drop-down, choose either isometric left or isometric right. I'm going to choose isometric right, and then for the extrude depth, we're going to increase it. Now we want to create a stone that has the size of a cube. It won't be exactly a cube, but we're going to get as close as possible to it. So increase that number, so let's try 250, toggle on and off the preview, that's too much maybe down to 200. And if that is not enough, just keep increasing it. So in my case, probably 220 is plenty. Now, in order to get an idea where your light comes from, you can use the 3D extrude and bevel options here too. Just click on more options and then watch where your light falls. Right now we have the light coming from the top right. So basically your highlight color would be on top, your medium color on the right, and the dark on the left. I'm going to keep the setting and then I'm going to press OK. Now this is still a life effect so we need to expand it. So we'll go to Object, Expand Appearance, or if you like to work fast like me you could use the shortcut Command or Control and 9. Now I'm going to apply my colors. For example I want to have more a sandstone color. Since we expanded it the whole shapes are grouped so let's ungroup them and then I can select them one by one. Sometimes you have to ungroup multiple times. Now I select the top and I'm going to give this a lighter color. So let's say this one here, the side a little bit darker and then the darkest on the left. Now we want the edges to be a little bit tacky, not straight. Now instead of using the pen tool and adding points, pulling them out, this is really tedious. I really like to work fast so here's a way you can actually apply it really quickly. Select all of the shapes, then we go back to Effect. You choose Distort and Transform, and then choose Zigzag. Now in the pop-up option, make sure you select Absolute, and then bring down the pixel size. Maybe all the way down to maybe two points. And the rigid segments set to two. Also, instead of smooth, keep it with corner, and then press OK. Now again, this is a live effect, so we'll expand it again. So back to Object, Expand Appearance. Now the edges of our stone are not straight anymore, which really helps us to build up what I've showed you before. Just in case, here it is again. So we're going to build this isometric stone, and we already have a good starting point. We just need to tweak our paths and points a little bit. We need to move certain points together so that they fall on top of each other. Now the easiest way to do this is with the lasso tool. Now first, select all of the shapes, 
then activate the lasso tool, and then one by one we're going to just circle the one points that need to be on top of each other. So I'm going to circle these two here, and then I'm going to Object, Path, and then I'm going to choose Average. There we're going to select both for the axis, and then press OK. Now both of them are on top of each other, and then we're going to continue. We're going to select the whole corner here, back, average, and choose both. Same for down here. And then we're going to continue with the top, and then that's pretty much it. So just in case, let's see if we need to put them together. I'm going to use the shortcut, Command and Option, or Control and Alt, and J on the keyboard, which brings up the average panel. Choose both and then click OK. I'll repeat this and then we continue just to see that all falls on top of each other. It does look like it, but I just want to make sure. Now, when you deselect it, you can see that we still need to average out those two corners on the left and the right. So, back to the lasso tool, select all of them, average them out, and one more time on the other side. And then probably down here too just to be sure. And that's it. Now we can continue adding highlights and shadows to make it really look like an isometric stone. Now since we're going to create two types of isometric stones, let's create a copy right away. I'll put it over here. And then we'll zoom in and we'll continue to work on this block. Now really all we have to do is use the pen tool and different kinds of colors, lighter and darker, to create the illusion that the stone is cracked. So first we're going to add a really bright highlight on top. So I'm going to choose my lightest color I have here in my group, select the pen tool, and then I'm going to create a really thin triangular shape on top here. This is where our crack will be. I'm working with the smart guides currently, so you can see that I can snap right away onto the path, and then I'm just going to free flow a small shape. Close it. And that is our first highlight. With the direct selection tool, I think I'm going to drag it out a little bit. Next, we're going to choose a darker color because we're going to create the illusion that there is a gap in between, basically a crack in the stone. So let's choose this one, back to the pen tool. And then I'm just going to create right next to the one that I've just created. I might have to zoom in a little bit, maybe choose a little bit of a lighter color and add an extra point. And as I can see, my corner widgets are going crazy, so I'm going to turn them off under view, hide corner widgets, and now I can just see my anchor points and I can move it closer to the other anchor that you see here. Maybe even this we need to bring down a little bit. You can also use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move it. And here's a small tip. I often go and change my keyboard increments. So under Illustrator, Preferences, General. For keyboard increments, I often set it to 0 0.1 to 5 pixels instead of 1 pixels. And then we can continue to create a highlight on the front here. So I'm going to select the shape to get the highlight color, pen tool again, and I'm creating a shape following along my top shape, basically to create the illusion that there is a chipped off corner as well. Next, activate the lasso tool again, and then we're going to select all of the corners here. The beauty with the lasso tool is that I don't even have to see the other anchor points below. I can just select them all at once. And then I'm going to press and hold the shift key on the keyboard, and with the arrow key downwards on the keyboard, I'm just going to push it down a little bit. Now let's zoom out. Now we have the starting point for our isometric stone. Next we're going to continue with this on the side. We're going to create another crack that falls along on the left. So I'm going to zoom in. We'll choose a darker color. And then with the pen tool again, we're going to create a crack, just how we did it on top. But instead of creating a shape, I want to show you another way how you can create a crack for an isometric stone. Instead of the fill, we're going to switch it to the stroke. And then I'm going to create a path, just approximately like this. And then I'm going to switch to the width tool and then widen it. And when I deselect, you can see I created the first line for my crack on the side of the stone. We're going to do the same thing with a lighter color just to create a small highlight on the bottom. So we're going to choose a lighter color, back to the pen tool, 
and then I'm going to create a line just below. And then back to the width tool, and I'm going to open it up a little bit. Make sure it's all the way tight on the ends, and then I have to move it closer together. So I can just move it up, and then if you need both of those anchor points to fall on top of each other, just select them with the direct selection tool, press and hold the shift key, and then select them. And then bring back the average, select both, and click OK. Same we can do on the other side. I press and hold the shift key, I select with the direct selection tool the other anchor point, and then with the shortcut Command and Option and J, or Control and Alt and J, I'm going to average them out. Might have to push this up a little bit, and when I zoom out, you can see that I've created now another crack on the side of our stone. The only thing I don't like is this part here. I want to wrap it around. Now let me show you how we can do this. We're just going to select this color again. This time we're going to switch back to the fill, take the pen tool, and then we're going to extend what we've just created to the edge and have it go over to the other side. And then we're going to close it. Probably have to push the point down a little bit. Again, since I'm working with really small keyboard increments, I can be really precise. And then let's zoom out. Now it looks like I have a crack on the left side of the stone falling onto the right side. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can add many more. It really depends what look you're going for. Now we're going to continue, add another one to the front here, and then a small one on the bottom. Since I still have a dark color selected, I'm going to zoom in, activate the pen tool again, and then simply create a really sharp triangle on the bottom, and then repeat the step from this side onto that. I'm not going to choose the stroke again and use the width tool, I'm just going to work with shapes again. I just wanted to show you a different way, so let's continue another triangle, and then a lighter color, probably this one here, back to the pen tool, and then a shape on the bottom, just like that. Now this doesn't look properly here, because we have to move a few anchor points. We have to actually push them in. And I'm going to show you how easy you can do this again, either with the direct selection tool or the lasso tool. So let's zoom in all the way. In order to create this illusion that we have a crack here and something is broken out, we need to push the points in. But first we have to actually create two extra anchor points on our front shape here that fall right along the path, exactly where those shapes have the anchor points as well. So in this case, I'm just going to select these two shapes and then I'm going to lock them. Then I'm going to select the front shape, go to the pen tool, zoom even more in so you can see it, and then because I'm using the smart guides, it will tell me where I intersect, and I'm just going to add anchor points. One here, another one there, and one down here. Now I'm going back to object and unlock everything, and then with the lasso tool, I'm going to grab all of these anchor points here, switch to the direct selection tool, click on it, and then move it inwards. Now when I zoom out, now we have the look as actually something is chipped out of the stone. And if you want to actually transform your stone altogether, you can just select the anchor points, move them up, move them out a little bit more. You'll get the idea how you can morph your isometric stone into something much more interesting. Plus if you make several copies of this, you can actually create quite a few isometric stones and then build up the wall that you'll probably be working on for your castle or something else. I'm actually going to push this in a little bit, then select this anchor point and push it outwards. At the same time, I'm going over some anchor points as well. Maybe I want to push this one in. Maybe I actually want to create more anchor points so I can transform the stone, push it in a little bit, select the darker color again, and with the pen tool, create another dark shape on the bottom, and maybe even select my stroke and alter it and simply what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline my stroke. So I select it, go to Object, Path, and then I'm going to choose Outline Stroke. I notice that both of my anchor points are falling on a straight line. So I think I will alter that a little bit. So I'm going to use the lasso tool, select them, and then move them over a little bit. The only thing I have to do is then change the shape here, move it over, have it fall onto the line, and then make sure it connects with my other shape that I've just expanded. Let me zoom out. Now it looks a little bit more dynamic. At the same time, we could add a few more anchor points, pull them out on top, do the same. This is really something that you would do at the end to get the desired outcome that you're looking for. And that's almost it. Now this is our first stone, so let's move this out of the way. 
Since I have everything selected, we could group it right away as well, so object and group, and then we can work on the second one. Now this is the exact copy that we had when we started this stone, and since we altered it already, it won't even look the same. We're going to repeat the same steps. And since the second stone is based on the same techniques as the first one, I'm going to speed it up for you. I have two isometric stones. Maybe this part actually we're going to make a little bit bigger. There's always tweaking that you can do. And then we can actually build up our isometric wall, for example. So I'm going to move this in front with a little tiny gap in the middle. Going to create a copy. Move that in front again. Have that on top. Create a copy. Move it on top. And so forth. And that's how you can create your isometric wall. We are the isometric stones we've just created. Now, if you wanted to have a little bit of a shadow below, for example, if this stone is not all the way stacked exactly on top, right now the color is all the same and we don't see a definition. We can just add a gradient shape. I'm even going to keep it in the same group. So when you move it, you can actually stack it again and don't have to add the shape again. So direct selection tool, I'm going to select the front shape. I'm going to create a copy and then paste it in front. And then I'm going to add a linear gradient. I'm just going to work with the standard white and black for now. Use the gradient annotator, shortcut for this is G, and then have the black on top and the white on the bottom. Then we're going to change the colors. So I'm going to double click on the gradient slider. I'll choose the darkest color, but set it to 0% opacity. And then I'm going to switch the top color from black to the dark brown and leave it at 100% opacity. Then I'm going to play with the diamond and push this down a little bit. can push this up so it gets much tighter. And then open up the gradient panel to actually put the proper angle. Right now we're a little bit off. We need to be 60 degrees instead of 63 and something. So set it to 60 degrees. Now we have the isometric angle. And now it looks like the stone is actually sticking out. And the same way you could create some shadows for the top as well. So let's just repeat this. Select the top with the direct selection tool. Create a copy. Paste it in front. And then add a gradient. We could just copy this one here. So let's do this. So I'm just going to use the eyedropper tool. And copy it. And then work with the angle. Again, minus 60 is the proper angle. And we can push this out so it's not too dark. I think you get the idea. And this is it. I just wanted to show you how you can create an isometric stone. Now there are many more ways to create isometric stones and rocks. But this is going to be in part two. I'll see you then.